Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now this is the Gigabyte Bricks. Actually it's the cheapest version of the mini PC I could find, retailing at just under £100 here in the UK. This one was actually X Display 2 so I paid £80 for it. The only giveaway that it was second hand was the fact that the plastic bag for the power adapter was ripped open. I wanted to buy this because on paper this bare bones machine doesn't sound up to much so how far can we push it and what sort of user might this interest? First of all let's talk about the size, I've placed a Core i3 CPU on top of this thing for some sort of scale and also featured the classic Dell mouse as a side by side comparison. This thing is small and ideal if you have limited desk space. Around the back we've got the standard selection of ports you would expect including USB 3, Ethernet, VGA, HDMI and this is in addition to the USB 3 port on the front along with the headphone and mic jack plus a USB type C connector. As a bare bones machine this machine requires that you add your own laptop memory module and 2.5 inch disk drive whether it be a traditional laptop hard disk or solid state drive. Doing so is as simple as removing the two screws at the back and sliding the top away from the bottom. As a budget option, RAM choice is limited to just one so dim module, so I decided on an 8 gig stick of 2133 MHz DDR4. I also connected my solid state drive to this thing which screws into position using these four holes. It's then just a matter of sliding the top of the case back in place and switching it on. The only indication that this thing is on is the white light that surrounds the power button. You can't hear this thing at all. For someone who wants a space saving budget driven option and doesn't mind familiarising themselves with the internal components of a mini system, this might be ideal. Firstly the CPU specs. Now this machine features the Celeron, wait it gets worse, N4000. This is a dual core chip from the Gemini Lake series launched in 2017, clocked at 1.1 GHz with a burst frequency of 2.6. It's also got a 6 watt TDP and uses barely any power. It does run quite warm in this configuration with an idle temp of 42 degrees and a load temp of 64. Graphics wise the Intel UHD 600i GPU is clocked at 200 MHz but bursts to 650. So what is the user experience like? After running the Cinebench R20 test and waiting a good 20 minutes for the multi-threaded result to complete, it was clear that this chip is intended for very light usage, something it does handle okay when web browsing, though there were a couple of hiccups when navigating sites like YouTube and watching an HD video. I don't think adding 16 gigs of DDR4 would help out either. It wouldn't be bad for a small Netflix machine or something, as it handled that quite well, but Let's try and melt this 6 watt beast with some games. Skyrim Special Edition, um, well as you can see it's not great, but remember, nowhere did Gigabyte say that this is a gaming rig, but as a channel with gaming in the title, I couldn't not try and get something running smoothly just for the sake of it. CSGO, which is heavily CPU dependent, also ran like Microsoft PowerPoint would on a Pentium 4, stuttery and slow. Bot matches and online matches run the same with about 20 FPS if you look up. Obviously that's not a brilliant way to play so let's move on to my go to run on anything title. Fallout New Vegas. At 720p low with medium textures the game hovered around 30 FPS. Interestingly we started off with almost 50 but after a minute or so the frame rate just dropped and never really recovered. I didn't record exact averages during these tests because let's face it, there really wasn't a need to, but I would describe Fallout New Vegas on the N4000 as similar to the PlayStation 3 version in both looks and performance, especially in performance. Did anyone else have issues with New Vegas on PlayStation 3 or was it just me? Left 4 Dead 2 however ran quite smoothly at 720p low. This is the carnival level so different maps may vary. For the most part here the game hovered around 30fps and I would call this playable to some extent. The onboard graphics are definitely more limiting than the N4000 processor which from the on screen stats appears to have more to give as the GPU is constantly at 100% usage. 
What I then thought about doing was attaching an external graphics card to this little box. I bought an EXP GDC ages ago which connects to the wireless adapter inside the PC but after setting everything up and connecting my 750Ti to the main adapter I realised that the cable I had was actually too wide and wouldn't fit on the motherboard so this idea was out of the window. I have tested this before with a laptop but perhaps I'll revisit it again someday when I have the right cable for the job. I then remembered I had GeForce Now installed as well as faster internet since I moved, so I decided to see if this mini machine could handle that. GeForce Now is of course Nvidia's game streaming service. If you own a supported game, you can play it over the cloud on one of Nvidia's super fast computers. The game is then streamed back to you. I think that's the general premise. We've also tested this before on different hardware, but it was certainly worth seeing if this could get the job done. First up I tested Watch Dogs Legion, I only realised this was supported when I saw it on the GeForce Now program and despite my internet still limiting me to 900p 60fps streaming quality, the game was certainly more enjoyable than it would be on the N4000, which I assume would get about 0.5 to 1fps in the main menu. I always find it hard to talk about GeForce Now without sounding like I'm advertising it, but honestly it's great if you have a low end system, but your internet is okay. Even on not so okay internet, things aren't that bad because I've tested that before as well. Another great title that I tested was The Witcher 3. All supported games should run fine to be honest here because the specs of the gigabyte bricks no longer matter. As long as the internet connection holds up, then we should be good to go. Again, I'm seeing the game in 900p and the quality will probably look a bit worse to you due to not only the external capture, but YouTube compression. The Witcher always looks good though, even at lower resolutions and settings. Finally, I tested a game that previously suffered with this machine, CSGO, maybe one of those titles that some may be more reluctant to test on GeForce Now due to latency concerns, but again the experience was better than with the actual PC hardware. Overall, the cheapest Gigabyte Bricks is a cool machine that's ideal for basic usage, and for those who don't mind gaming with GeForce Now, then it could fit the bill in that scenario too. Still, it is a shame that we are limited to a single stick of RAM in terms of upgrade options, but the N4000 CPU probably wouldn't benefit from anything more anyway. eBuyer here in the UK did have another model with a J1900 CPU installed instead for just £10 more at the time of this video so that would probably be worth considering instead because that is a quad core chip and would offer better all round performance. As for this one though, well thank you very much for watching. Let me know what you think of the cheapest gigabyte bricks below. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like on it. Of course, leave a dislike if you didn't. If you want me to cover any more mini PCs like this one, let me know in the comments because I'm very open to it. There are a few that I've been taking a look at, so hopefully I can find a few more and put some more reviews out there. There are some new Ryzen chips in some of these as well, and I'm sure they'll be interesting to review and benchmark. All that's left to say then is thank you very much for watching and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.